Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where I cover nostalgic, obscure, or otherwise strange content. I was up in the middle of the night last night watching a movie called When Good Ghouls Go Bad from 2001 with Christopher Lloyd, and uh, I got a big kick out of it. And uh, since it is a very Halloween-y movie, I figured we'd talk about it today. <laughs> I never knew that this movie existed, it apparently aired on Fox Family, which I guess was ABC Family, which is now Freeform or something, I think. And although I did not intend to do two R.L. Stein videos back to back, I didn't realize until this morning that the movie is based on a book written by R.L. Stein. So, little R.L. Stein Halloween double feature for you. Also, really quickly before we get into the movie, I just wanted to um, mention, I usually keep things pretty lighthearted on this channel, but I did want to mention that this morning I was looking into this movie a little bit and uh, learned that the child actor um, Joe Pickler? I really hope I'm saying that name right. Um, I, I learned that he tragically went missing in 2006 and his case is still open, which may be really sad. It's just such a bizarre, terrible thing. And um, yeah, so I just wanted to acknowledge that right off the bat. Um, I'm obviously not a true crime YouTuber, but I managed to find a, a video covering the case and I've, I've linked it in the description box if you wanna learn more about that. Yeah, I just wanted to express my sympathy to his family and just for the whole situation and um, and also just voice that obviously, you know, this movie review and my opinions on it obviously have have nothing to do with that and, and I, I mean no, no disrespect to that um, situation. I know it goes without saying that like whenever I review a piece of work I never mean personal disrespect to anybody, but I just felt the need to, to um, voice that today, so, okay. I'll get into the movie now. So Danny is a boy whose parents have gotten divorced and he has moved back to his dad's childhood town with his dad. And the town, uh, they're very against Halloween. Like they haven't celebrated Halloween in like 20 years. In the opening scene of the movie, we see a police officer just like pull up and, and steal Danny's jack-o'-lantern that he put out on his front step. Like they're very intense about it. It's kind of like if How the Grinch Stole Christmas was centered around him stealing Halloween, and it's not one guy stealing a holiday from everybody else. It's everybody else stealing a holiday from this one child. Even the custodian seemed glad to see him. Oops. The whole town is just ganging up on this poor kid. I, it's just, it's really, really terrible. Like, it's so bad, the bullying is so bad that, like, he basically, like, goes limp and pretends to go unconscious because that's the only way to get kids to stop ganging up on him. Like, what the hell? Then again, his dad has spent the last five years fighting his way into bankruptcy and divorce. So what did he know? James Walker. This is his dad. He works way too much. It's a tale as old as at least the early 90s. Probably older. Also, I thought this was, like, his stepmom the first time I watched this at first, but like, it's not, it's like the assistant. It just, I didn't, I, I couldn't tell. What's that, Miss Vanderspool? The French on line two. You know you can't touch the French. Aperitif moment, c'est vous plaît. Wholesome as she may be, um, the school nurse is trying to inform this guy that his poor kid has been like beaten up and they're just not answering the phone. So that's shitty. Feeling out. I guess that's something the walkers would know all about, huh? This is the coach. He's running for some kind of mayoral office, I think. That would that would be the mayor's office. I think there's only one kind of mayoral office. I like that he is always seen wearing a letterman jacket and what look like pajama pants. You do you guy. If the apocalypse has taught me anything, it's to dress comfy. The pros included a great autumn air smell, wood smoke, burning leaves, and just a hint of carbonized marshmallows, plus lower temperatures. I like that the narration detours into giving us like a weather report right there. Hey Ryan. Dork. I like the usage of the word dork as a title substitution <laughs> in the way that like only early 2000s, late 90s kids movies can do, right? <laughs> That's Mr. Dork to you. If you couldn't tell by the matching letter jacket, uh, this bully kid is the coach slash potential mayor's son. Uh, and he had some of the most hilariously bad dialogue in this whole movie. What's up? Your number, that's what? 
It's just like that corny bully dialogue that you see in DCOMs, and I love it so much. You know what that is, Danny? A crypt? No, dork. It's a place where they bury somebody. Oh, okay, now I get it. And his name was Curtis Danko. Exposition time, who's ready for exposition time? So about 20 years ago from the start of this movie, there was this kid who was kind of the weird kid in class. Nobody really liked him. When all the other kids would paint pictures of normal stuff like barns and tractors and baskets of apples, Curtis Stanko would paint pictures of monsters or aliens. Why is nobody else looking at the painting? The city council announced that they were putting this statue in the town square for the big centennial celebration. They asked all the eighth graders at Walker Falls Middle School to do a sculpture of their hero. So the whole town did this thing where they asked all of the eighth graders in town to do a sculpture of their personal hero. And then whichever one got the most votes uh, that statue would be erected in the town square. <laughs> interesting concept. Even more interesting how good some of these eighth graders seem to be at sculpting human beings. But the kind of strange kid, he was just like, uh-uh, I'm not doing this in front of anybody else. And he would cover it up during the day and then sneak back in at night and sculpt by himself. I have a lot of questions as to like how he got in or why, but okay. It's nothing but moonlight and fireflies to light his way. I don't know if fireflies are like a reliable light source. No one knows for sure if what happened was a horrible accident or the end result of some sinister scheme. So that kid's costume is the letterman jacket that he always wears and a mask that just looks like a mask version of his own face. It's really going all out for Halloween. When my dad got to the art room the next day, he noticed something. Something wrong. I mean, yeah, the whole thing is burned up. <laughs> the way he says, well, he noticed something weird, like he's some kind of Sherlock Holmes looking for clues. The thing is like a charred heap. All that was left was Curtis Danko's burned up skeleton, his completed sculpture, and a message written in his own ashes. Right, so this poor kid tragically dies and there is left behind a warning to never celebrate Halloween again uh, or else he will come back from the grave to haunt everybody. Uh, even though he never seemed to express any problems with Halloween when he was alive to our knowledge. And then the whole town just unanimously takes it seriously and shuts down Halloween for 20 years straight with no further questions. When he told people what it looked like under that shroud, this kid likes to use the word shroud, which is kind of a fancy word considering that he doesn't know what crypts are. <laughs> because my father was blind for three days after he looked at Curtis Danko's creation. So they're trying to force Danny to go in to look at the sculpture, I guess. Why? Because I want to know what it really looks like. But just in case the sight of it makes a person burst into flame or turn to stone or makes your head explode, I want someone to try it out ahead of me. Well, you know what happens. According to your dad, you go blind for three days. You don't need another test subject. And Danny very obviously is like, yeah, no, I'm not gonna do that, and he runs off. And as it turned out, we're actually so bad it is to being built like a scarecrow. <laughs> How'd he fit through there? <laughs> not only are those bars very close together, but also there's like a, there's like a bar on the bottom. He would have, he would trip. <laughs> I don't know if that set continuity is really something I'm buying into, but okay. Never mind. Just, just climb over it, kid. Never mind. Starts digging a hole with his bare hands. So Danny runs all the way to this front door and the one bully catches up to him and winds up for a very strange looking punch. And then the door swings open and Danny falls into the house and the bully gets scared away. Uncle Fred? God, let's go back. The executioner to you, we grandson. So he calls this guy Uncle Fred, but it's really his grandpa Fred. Why? <laughs> I'd insisted that everyone, even my own family members, call me Uncle Fred in public to keep the human symbol of the Walker Chocolate Company front and center at all times. Oh, huh. Interesting. <laughs> 
That's dedication to a company that I believe has been shut down for about as long as the town hasn't had Halloween. <laughs> but this guy's kind of a funny character anyway, so... Indeed. Oops. So anyway, this one bully runs to meet up with this other bully in this dark shed for some reason. What kind of Viking living with him? What did he say? What kind of Viking living with him? I heard Viking. <laughs> Maybe the sound engineering needed a little work there, but again, moving on. So they've stolen the sculpture, which is still covered up, and they plan to charge people on Halloween night to not have to look at it. Entrepreneurs, these kids are. So Danny tries to tell his dad about what's been going on with, you know, the bullies and the kid that died and what have you, and naturally the dad being um, apparently very aware that he is a dad in a early 2000s children's movies like yeah, yeah 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 kid i don't care i got work business to attend to someone's bothering at school danny just talk to your teacher and he runs off to a town hall meeting where he pitches the resurrection of halloween oh and these two characters are the uh, the wives of the the one coach guy and the other guy running for mayor they really don't serve much of a purpose as characters the the most important thing that they do is they're in this one scene bumper stickering random people's cars with their husband's campaign stickers, which, can you do that? <laughs> is that legal? I would be super pissed if I just went out to my car and there was a random political sticker on it. Danny's dad talks to the school nurse from before and their, uh, their hashtag relationship goals. <laughs> I'm the school nurse now. No, I'm sorry Aunt, that I'm in perfect health. So nobody in the in the assembly really takes well to this idea of bringing Halloween back. They're very scared of Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> yes, well. Even his own dad, the grandpa character, who uh, is there in disguise apparently, really has given him nothing to work with. If it wasn't for that greedy old man sticking his nose in everything, this... Curtis Danko thing wouldn't have happened in the first place. Oh my god, I love the coach guy. He's just such a fun bad guy, isn't he? He's just hilarious. I need to bring in some investors who, who can see what I see when I look up at that old factory up there. Yeah, so the people he was talking on the phone with earlier are German investors who he's hoping to entice to put down money to help him get the chocolate factory and everything started back up again. So yeah, everybody just literally up and runs out of there screaming. They all just dip. They're like, hell no, we're not doing Halloween. But Danny's dad is undeterred. He's very much still trying to make his case, even to this pretty much empty room, bless his heart. You're a dreamer, Danny. <laughs> well, so were you once upon a time. Right, so we learn in this scene that daddy issues are kind of a hereditary thing in this family. He built this town and a fortune. He also built the kiln room that Curtis Danko died in. And also, Grandpa slash Uncle Fred was responsible for building the kiln that Curtis Danko, the kid that died, died in. So he's, he's not real thrilled about this whole Halloween thing either. So Uncle Fred tries to take off for the beach. Um, because it's something he never got to do with his son, Danny's dad, and he tries to take Danny with him, and Danny's the responsible one that's just like, I, I have school. <laughs> I got school. You can't just up and take me out of town, Grandpa. <laughs> but uh-oh, don't you hate it when you're about to leave town and that pesky mob is just standing at your front door? <laughs> you're, a <laughs> you're a lying, cheating, bad person. <laughs> I love the additional lines that they throw into movies. It's so funny. So this cop shows up and he's like, hey, wait till you see the town square, then you'll really be mad. And when they get to the town square, there's just hella pumpkins piled up everywhere. I haven't had pumpkin pie in 20 years. No, what's pumpkin pie? What's pumpkin pie? I think it's kind of self-explanatory, kid. But anyway, everybody kind of goes from being an angry mob to literally just being transfixed by all these pumpkins in like two seconds. And then Uncle Grandpa Fred is like, hey, let's do the Halloween thing. Happy Halloween. And then he dies. <laughs> Like seriously, he just gets crushed to death by all these pumpkins. It's very sad. So Danny's struggling. He runs off at the funeral and um, we meet this girl, 
She's the daughter of the school nurse. And when it finally hits you that they're really dead, you start thinking about all that gross stuff that's happening to their bodies. Ah, oh, not the most comforting of words. Like a miracle in reverse. Cells breaking down, the flesh disintegrating. I don't feel very encouraged at all. Aren't you a cheerleader? Oh dear. <laughs> so she takes him to this secret haunted house thing that all the kids in town have built to kind of like have an underground unofficial Halloween. It's like a Halloween speakeasy. Halloween speakeasy would be a great name for a band. If you don't get to survive being scared as a kid, how are you ever gonna survive being scared as an adult? I mean, I, I think that's a point. <laughs> so the bullies bust in and basically commandeer the Halloween speakeasy uh, by threatening to have his parents fire this poor girl's mom, which is a shitty thing to do for sure. All right, Ryan, we give. What? Close to the most cowardly thing I ever saw. She gets mad at Danny for not standing up to the bullies and then they leave and these two fireflies fly off to the cemetery really ominously. Uh, and then Danny comes back home and surprise, uh, Grandpa, not as dead as he was before. You're dead. Apparently not. Yeah, so he's had kind of a weird day for sure. Does Dad know about this? <laughs> oh, yeah. I called him on his cell phone. Hi, this is your not-so-dead father calling from the grave. I mean, I think kids appreciate when their zombie parents check in on them from now and then. So, yeah, the coach guy and his bully son, they're stirring up shit. So Uncle Fred takes his opportunity to get some payback. You're dead. You're right. Yeah, so he scares this guy. It's pretty epic. And then the guy rolls up his window and chops his zombie hand off. So that kind of sucks for him. Anybody else want a piece of me? I think my favorite part about the plot line of him not having his hand for a little while is that they didn't bother to like digitally or otherwise make it look like his hand was missing. He's just like walking around with two hands and, and we're just supposed to imagine that one of them is not there. So they try to throw his hand out, which is really rude of them. And then the fireflies, they come in and just salvage the hand for him, which very nice, those fireflies. I was not aware of all this untapped firefly potential. It's a hoax! And they end up giving Walker all the money you'll need to save the town! Yeah, so he's pretty upset because Danny's dad wants to financially rescue the town. How dare he? But then the school nurse lady, meanwhile, catches up to these two and um, to make up for the very, very expensive electric bill that has been racked up through this Halloween speakeasy. I'm gonna continue calling it that for the rest of the movie, by the way. Uh, she forces them to go to this political gathering, I think, of some kind with her. She also calls Danny's dad and is like, yo, time to do dad stuff. And he's like, but I have work stuff. I big important work dad. <laughs> uh, but then he feels guilty because his dad was big important work dad and he was once sad, lonely work dad's kid. <laughs> so he shows up anyway. Meanwhile, Uncle Fred sees his opportunity to get his hand back by posing as Cheesy the Clown, which the kids are very excited for. We love cheesy. I don't think I would have been that excited as a child or now to see a clown of any kind. <laughs> you the clown? <laughs> No, it's just a new look he's trying out. So Uncle Fred's chasing his disembodied hand around this house as the dad shows up. And so Danny's trying to distract him so that he doesn't see that his zombie dad is a whole issue that he has to deal with now. So Uncle Fred decides to bribe all the kids with $100 to help him find his hand. <laughs> like a really fucked up Easter egg hunt. So, you know, there's a lot of chaos. It ends with Uncle Fred being scattered into pieces in a trunk that the two kids now have to carry home. <laughs> Middle school problems, am I right? Uh, but then their two parents, meanwhile, almost do a kiss and then don't because Halloween decorations? This wasn't here when I got here. Oh, and then also, surprise, Uncle Fred is not even close to being the only zombie in town. There's like a whole lot of them. Meanwhile, the uh, the assistant has picked up the German investors from the airport. I think I should warn you, it's, it's kind of quiet now. There's not really a lot to say about that. She, she just picked them up from the airport and it will take her literally all night to get them back into town, which is a very small town, so 
not entirely sure why. <laughs> I guess she does get stopped by zombies, so it's a valid excuse. How we feel about that Native American zombie? Because I don't really know what to think, and uh, it's not entirely my place to comment, um, but my instinct tells me that it's not awesome. <laughs> Ooh, so they reassemble Uncle Fred in the most horrifying way possible. <laughs> And his hand comes back with a key, so that was helpful, hand. Hun? Do you think these will help? <laughs> Just love it so much. What kind of little problem, Ed? Just, you know, somebody broke into Curtis Danko's crypt. <laughs> Sounds like some kids messing around. So yeah, Curtis Danko, also a zombie, also alive, or undead. Kind of half alive, semi-alive. He's out there walking. <laughs> One minute you're alive, and the next minute you're dead, and the next minute you're alive again, but you're still dead! So Danny's kind of having a breakdown because he's kind of the only voice of reason right now. You remember all those millions of fireflies we tried to catch this summer? And how one day, uh, when it started to turn cold, they just didn't come back? Uh, and then Uncle Fred explains to us the magic of fireflies, so that's a thing. And when all those millions of fireflies die, bodies come undone and release their magic into the ground. So fireflies plus decomposition equals magic. Got it. <laughs> so the horrors of shady politicians and zombies collide at the town hall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then the kids are just like, hey, Danny's dad, surprise. Uncle Fred is a zombie now. Love that for him. Hi, son. And he and the mom take it pretty well. Uncle Fred tries to distract the other zombies. I eat their brains. Huh? Nice try, Uncle Fred. Doesn't really work, but good for him for trying. What are you doing? I just want to leave something for my family so they know what my last moments were like. <laughs> ah! Big mood right there. Giant, colossal mood. <laughs> yeah, so chaos ensues. Everybody's running in every direction. Uh, the kids are trying to get to the bottom of this whole problem uh, before things get worse. And uh, Danny finds out that his grandma is also a zombie, so... My grandma's a zombie! My grandma's a zombie! There's that. They realize that they need to get Curtis's sculpture back. Hopefully put him back to rest. And they all end up at the Halloween speakeasy together. Just like everybody in the movie ends up at the Halloween speakeasy. Adults, kids, everybody. The bully kids don't believe that the zombies are real. <laughs> and then they do. The zombies corner all the kids and then they fall through the ceiling. Poor kids. Uh, and then the zombies put Curtis's sculpture down in the center of the room, and Curtis comes out in all of his badass zombie rock star glory. Like, that is an aesthetic I wish I could pull off. Don't hurt these people. It's not their fault. If I hadn't wanted to be such a big hero... No! It's my fault. I'm the one who talked all the other kids into having another Halloween. No! It's my fault! Now everybody tries to take responsibility so that the zombie doesn't kill everybody else. It's kind of like this movie's version of the I'm Radio Rebel thing. What's up, Greg? But then Mr. Coachman just comes in and annihilates Curtis the zombie and thinks that he's won, but guess what? That's not how zombies work. Uh, and then instead of taking brutal revenge, like I would be tempted to do at this point, Curtis the zombie just unveils his art project, and it is a sculpture of Uncle Fred. Aww. Yeah, it turns out Uncle Fred was his hero the whole time. Also, it turns out that uh, bully kid's dad, the coach, when he was a bully himself, he and his friends locked Curtis into the kiln, and that's why he died. So this is what they call a bad look. <laughs> Yeah, and he made up the whole thing about being blinded for three days so that Curtis's sculpture wouldn't be in the town square instead of his. I've never wanted anything badly enough that I pretended to be blind for three days to get it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Your dad was real generous when it came to the arts and crafts and drama and a marching band and all that other sissy stuff. But asking for money for, oh, say, the football world theme park and RV campground like my dad wanted to build. Where real men can take their real sons. Okay. 
dial back this toxic masculinity for a second and allow me to explain something to you. Art projects always get cut in favor of football. Nothing against football. Lots of people love playing football. But like, come on. The arts always lose out to sports. Maybe I'm just a jilted art kid. <laughs> Moving on. Um, Coach's zombie dad drags him off to God knows where. I don't know what happened to him. I don't really care, but zombie Curtis saunters off into the night. What a badass man. And everybody respects the Walker family again, so that's nice. Uncle Fred slash Grandpa Fred reunites with Grandma Fred. <laughs> I don't know what the grandma's name is. And all the zombies get to rest easy, so good for the zombies. So how are you really feeling, Dad? I never felt better, actually. You want to know why? Because I finally really know that I'm loved. It's so sweet, I'm crying into my very cold coffee. Hypothetically speaking, I think we better keep those two a few blocks apart, at least for the next few years. It's a little bit iffy if, like, the parents are a thing and the kids are a thing, right? Because then, like, there's... Right, that's a... <sighs> and so all the zombies apparently get to go to zombie heaven. The family goes on that trip that Uncle Fred always wanted to go on. They put up the statue of Uncle Fred, and it's a big happy ending for everybody. And the German investors show up, and they're, they're down with the zombie stuff. They're just like, cool, we want to give you even more money than we did before. We are doubling our investment, Herr Walker. <laughs> That's good. Oh, and also the one investor has a thing for the assistant, I'm pretty sure, so good for them. And yeah. That's When Good Ghouls Go Bad, a 2001 movie that I had never heard of before. I don't know, do you guys remember this movie or are you just now finding out about it? You know, tell me what you think about it down in the comments down below. But I'm gonna wrap up the video here. I hope you guys liked it. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing, anything and everything you do to support this channel, to support me. I really appreciate it. Some of you have even been, you know, sending me sweet messages over on Instagram and things like that. So I just, I really appreciate all of your support and everything. It's just, it means the world. Uh, if you're new here and you're a fan of nonsense, maybe consider sticking around because I post nonsense all the time and ring that bell because my upload schedule is chaos just like me. And remember, my name is Avery. I'm a YouTuber if you say so, because thanks to you guys, this is technically a YouTube channel. Bye.